So uh, I uh, propose to start now with uh, this session, graphic oriented session. So, yeah. Chris. Okay. So I will start my official A timer. The official time is 2, so we have a risk to this session. Yes, that's okay. Yeah. The room is quite full, so. And there is a few people outside, so I think it can go. There are some people from Syncom, though. Their counterparts are missing. <laughs> That's okay, I deal with them every day, so. <laughs> Separate talk. Okay, uh, so I'm going to give a talk about something called the Cairo Graphics Kit. Uh, I don't like saying Cairo Graphics Kit every second word, so we shortened it, and we refer to it where I work as the CGK. Uh, my name is Chris Gorgensen, and I work for a company called Land Research Corporation. So, I have been reduced to a QR code, so if anybody has a smartphone and wants contact information, then that's me. Uh, I'm a senior staff software engineer, and again, I work for this company called Land Research Corporation. So, what does LAM Research do? Um, unlike most of the companies that are here, uh, we represent a use of small talk that is in a different space compared to most of what I've seen. Uh, we are a supplier of wafer fabrication equipment to the worldwide semiconductor industry. So, that's the official marketing spiel for what our company does. Uh, in layman's terms, we make IC components, or we make the equipment that manufactures the IC components that you find in the laptops that you use, uh, you'll find them in the smartphones that you use. So if it's electronic and it contains any IC, then there's a good chance that our machine was involved in the manufacturing of that IC. And VisualWorks Smalltalk is at the heart of the control system that runs our machine. So kind of what that implies is that a lot of people don't realize that, you know, it's a six degrees of separation sort of thing. Maybe in our case it's only about two degrees. That Smalltalk plays a critical role in our machine, which in turn is used to manufacture the electronics that people use every day. So it's one of those you know, things that people don't realize how much small talk plays a role in the equipment that they use every day. So, what is a piece of semiconductor equipment? What does it look like? Um, this is a machine that we make. Uh, it's quite large. Uh, a human, probably the scale, would come up to about here. Um, so, it is used to manufacture these, which have many different names. Some people call them, in my industry, we call them wafers, uh, substrates, uh, so they go by many names. But when they're finished, they get cut up and they get put into these, which are ICs, and they could be anything from flash memory, DRAM, uh, core i7 processors really depends on what the customer uses our machine to manufacture. And then these things go inside your smartphone, your laptop, your solid state drive. So, again, we are using uh, Visual Works Smalltalk to run this machine. We have multiple images on the machine. Uh, we have a user interface which runs a UI based image. And then we actually have uh, the VisualWorks Smalltalk VM compiled to run on VXWorks uh, with real time extensions that we have created. So not only do we have real time capabilities with Smalltalk, but we also have the usual user interface application. So we're not dealing in the web space, uh, we are dealing in the sort of, I guess you could say, the desktop application space. So we have an application that runs on the UI, and then we have the embedded side, which is headless, that runs on uh, this little thing 
right here contains a VMD card cage, and that VMD card cage is running uh, VxWorks with the uh, real-time VM. So now that we have a short lesson about what the semiconductor equipment company <coughs> is all about, I'll give you a quick overview of, here's a sample of a user interface. Um, you'll notice that it's still styled in motif. Uh, and that says something about when this project was started. Um, it was started in the mid-90s, back when VisualWorks was still on uh, 252. And that branch of software still to this day exists. Uh, in fact, it's, it's used quite a bit on some machines. Uh, we are, or have, switched over to VisualWorks 7.7. And, or sorry, I should say 7.4, and we're in the process of moving over to 7.7, uh, 7. and Arden is trying to convince us to move to 7.8, so we'll see what happens. Uh, this is a, a uh, uh, user interface running on our UI computer, what we call UI PC. Uh, this would be VisualWorks 7.4 that you're seeing. So we still have a look and feel of motif uh, and that's just because our customers, we tried to change it to a different look and feel, and even though the software was exactly the same, it scared everybody because it looked different. <laughs> so we just switched it back to uh, Motif and we leave it at that. I personally can't stand the Motif look and feel and I've tried to convince people to change, but it is what, you know, what it is. Uh, here's an example of another user interface. Uh, this part right here is actually the first time we started using Cairo in VisualWorks. Um, and so this overview here is being rendered by Cairo. Uh, let me back up for a second here and just explain quickly. Uh, this is what we call an animation overview. So this gives us a top-down view of this thing. So. What we're trying to do is animate what's going on inside this machine. And we always take that approach. So this is, a, as you can tell from this animation, it's a completely different style of machine. Uh, we have maybe 15 different styles of machine that we, we sell to customers. Our customers would be like Intel or Sony. Uh, anybody who manufactures semiconductor would be using one of these machines. Okay, so, uh, by a show of hands, who knows what Cairo is? Okay, so most people do. City in Egypt. What's it? It's a city in Egypt, that's right. I didn't say where Cairo is, I said what Cairo is. Uh, I, I just have a quick slide here for those of you that don't. Um, Cairo is an open source 2D graphics library with support for multiple targets. This was taken right off their webpage. Uh, it is written in pure C. It's usually compiled as an external DLL, and the currently supported output targets are X Windows for Linux, or uh, yeah, X Windows Quartz, Win32, Image Buffers, um, PostScript, PDF, and SVG as backends. And then Syncom created a small talk language binding to the Cairo library, and it utilizes the DLLC Connect technology. And you can get it from the public store. It's packaged uh, under the uh, Cairo Graphics package in Tinkoff. I think Travis, <coughs> last year, Travis Griggs did a talk on Pango, uh, which is a sister project to Cairo for font rendering. And I think the year before he did Cairo, yep. uh, specifics on, on Cairo and the work on the binding itself. So that's Cairo. What is the CGK? Uh, the Cairo Graphics Kit is not another implementation of the binding. Um, it is a collection of packages that further enhance the Cairo Graphics and Tango packages already provided by Syncom. Uh, so it provides Cairo-based views, wrappers, controllers, extensions, uh, some utilities, and some working examples. And that's really what it is. Uh, it's a working example of what you can do with VisualWorks, uh, Cairo, and Pango. That's what it started out as, I should say. It soon evolved into an entire toolkit for our needs, which I'm going to go into later, uh, which is sort of what, what caused us to, what caused a semiconductor company that was in making machine control software, what on earth did we get into the making graphics packages for? 
the CGK is also a free bundle uh, that's licensed under LGPL for use in VisualWorks 7.7. Uh, we are in the works of adding it, uh, an MIT license. Uh, we just have to clear that with our legal department. And with a bit of work, you can also get it to work in 7.4. Um, if you had ever followed Travis's <coughs> posts on Travis's blog about um, some of the CGK stuff, a long, long time ago, I pinged Travis to find out if I could get his work, which he started in 7.6, to work in 7.4. And sure enough, he said, yes, you can. And he actually did some tests for us. And so that was the moment at which we decided, OK, we know what we're going to do, and off we went. So you can get it to work in 7.4. So what started it all? Well, we had an animation technique that was used by our older framework that couldn't meet the requirements of some new equipment that we were designing. Uh, specifically, the new equipment was, I'm oh, sorry, let me back up there. Uh, reset here, sorry. Yes. Go ahead. So will you explain why you need to rewrite some widgets and why you could not inject the Cairo binding into a new canvas? Say, I'm sorry, say that again. You see, well, maybe that's a silly question, huh? but what I was thinking is that to write Cairo, you could have a